Good afternoon, church family. Pastor David, welcome. Thank you. Uh, to Unfiltered, a time where uh, Pastor David is unfiltered about what we share, just different events. So thank you for tuning in and, and look forward for you joining us. Today, Pastor, I wanted to ask a question. More, what is the thinking behind this, I don't know what you call it, uh, this move, where Pride Month is celebrated for an entire month. Mm -hmm. But we look at Memorial Day, it's one day. Independence Day, one day. Veterans Day, one day. And these are, are significant things that men had laid down their lives for our freedom. They were able to, we celebrate some very significant things on these days. And so now we hear of LBGTQ celebrating a whole entire month. And really, what have they really done for our society? So what is the thinking behind that, Pastor? And it's demonic. I mean, the, the simple answer and the quick one is it's simply a demonic. It's a demonic spirit that is leading uh, people to uh, accept and to actually normalize uh, perverted lifestyles and perverted desires. And this isn't new. This is something that has been under attack in terms of the family, in terms of uh, morality and things of that nature. That's just from, from almost the beginning, John. Um, yeah, I, I, I ask myself, what is the reasoning behind making such attempts to to glorify uh, such a perverted lifestyle? And like you said, you know, veterans, those who served the, the, the nation, willing to do whatever was necessary to preserve our, our freedoms, um, you get a day where people may or may not um, appreciate the sacrifice that many, including myself, mm -hmm. made to, to at least be ready to, and many others did, defend this nation unto the giving of their own life for it. That's why we have Memorial Days, mm. a day. And so you have Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and maybe one or two single day events. And then you end up with a full month of celebrating homosexual pride. And you have to ask yourself, just what is it that they do that they're so proud of? What is it? What, what makes their choices at in terms of their physical attractions and behaviors, what makes that something to be proud of? I don't see a heterosexual month. Uh, I do see attacks on heterosexuality, mm -hmm. but I don't see a month of it. But that's what it is. You know, pride, it, it, even saying it is something that, that you celebrate pride, again, pride for what? You're an artist. Are you a good artist because you're a homosexual? Is that what you're saying? You're you're a good athlete because you're a homosexual? I mean, that makes absolutely no sense. And so what it is, is an undermining of the traditional structure of the society. And all along, you have nations that hate us, that are working in complete mm -hmm. opposite directions. Uh, I would like to see if they're in, in China, if they have a Pride Month. I'd like to see whether they have one of those in uh, in. In Russia, do you have a Pride Month? Do you bring in homosexuals into your military? Do you give them high positions in uh, in government? Is that what you do? Do they have Pride Month in Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it is ridiculous. And what it is, it is a, uh, it's, it's a demonic spirit to under, undermine the uh, foundations and the traditions of the family in the United States and, and, uh, it, it ought to be opposed. It ought to be at least spoken of even as we're doing right now in the sense of saying, uh, what's, the, what's the spirit behind it? The destruction of the family. That's the spirit behind it. Who is the one initiating that? Well, it's demonic. Mm -hmm. And we have our administration applauding it and, and uh, lauding them heroes and brave where we don't even really get that on the days that we're to celebrate, that's really significant. Well, that's ridiculous. You know it and I know it, John. Um, 
I don't think that, that a person is, is to be lauded based on a sexual preference and activity. You ought to be lauded for the accomplishments that you made. And therefore, if you're a homosexual, lesbian, or whatever, and you've, you've done a heroic act, uh, I agree with saying, you know, marvelous, that's wonderful. You, you did something wonderful, and I truly appreciate you. But what has happened is people don't want to talk about what they do, the kinds of things that they do, the kind of behaviors that they have, the percentage of those who are actually involved in those kinds of things, because they're exaggerated. All those numbers are exaggerated. I mean, the Kinsey Report years ago said, oh, 10%. But in fact, I, I was looking at a study recently by a, uh, um, a, a particular department in, in UCLA that said that the, the same-sex um, um, percentage is, is somewhere around between 1% and 2% of people in the nation, and yet you say, oh, no, it's just filling it, and the transgender is less than 1% in our nation, and yet we are making laws that say that, that you're supposed to be able to allow a man who's still fully male in his genitalia walk into a, um, a woman's uh, naked, where the women are naked, they're nude, he, he can walk in and, and call himself a woman. He doesn't have to have any, any uh, appearances of transformation at all, and you can't keep him from doing that. Mm -hmm. um, there's too many crazy things going on for us to, to think, uh, oh, is, this isn't an attack. No, this is, a, this is an attack. You know, and it's it all it, it is an evil that's coming down from from our present administration. But it's not just just in that administration. There are there are people who are who are Republicans and Libertines and all the rest who um, who who are actually well, they are Libertines, but people in different political persuasions who are uh, basically um, just kind of keeping their mouth shut or lining up behind them to try and get a vote so they can keep their mm -hmm. power. But you see the corruption of that. So this is just one evidence of it. So the Dodgers caved. They caved to a small but loud group. That's what they did. And they ought to be ashamed of themselves. And I'm blessed to know that at least one Dodger stood up and said, I'm a Christian and I don't go for this. And where the other that everybody knows, who I've admired for a long time, he seemed to have no spine. I, I don't understand that whatsoever. I'm very disappointed in, in Kershaw, who, who happens to be somebody that I greatly have appreciated mm -hmm. up to this point. But to back down, no, you don't. There are things you draw a line and say, listen, if you want to celebrate this, I'm not going to judge you for what you do, because I don't. But to try and make me agree with it and say that it's right and it's good, I will not do that, I, and you can't pay me to do that. And so believers are supposed to be salt and light. Mm. So for us to yield to that, for whatever reason, with the Dodger organization, for what? They're losing fans. Yes. They're losing fans. It's ridiculous. And they need to stop this nonsense, especially bringing in those, those perverted um, sisters of perpetual indulgence. And to give them a hero award it's sickening. And I wrote to the Dodgers. They don't care, but I wrote and I told them, this is just wrong. And as I've been a, a Dodger fan, if you will, since 1959. I mean, and for them to give in and cave in in this, and these other, you know, and the angels to celebrate it, the angels, fallen angels. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, it's just crazy. But yeah, that's the, what is the reason they do this, John? It's because it's a demonic spirit to destroy the foundations of the nation. And if the foundations are destroyed, what can the people do? Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we're to stand up and... Yeah, we don't have to be mad and, and, and argue. I, you know, it's, it is something that I have emotion over it, but I most certainly am I'm not going to attack somebody. Listen, I've known more than one homosexual, including my sister who came out of mm -hmm. lesbianism. I've known more and loved more than, than uh, you know, just the one. But, the, but it's still true, it's, what they're doing is wrong. It's going to bring judgment. And we as a nation, we have become a, a, we're becoming a banana republic right now, <laughs> right in front of our eyes, selling power. You know, a president who sells, off, sells power, you know, they give him money and, you know, they're going after one ex-president because he had some boxes. And this other one had them all over the place and they've done nothing. And they'll do nothing for the son either. His, his son who made millions of dollars 
you know, uh, working in a field he has no experience in, and nobody notices it. They're so busy hating the orange man. And I'm no fan of, uh, of Trump by any means. I, I think he was a great president, but he, the way he acted was really uh, bothersome to me. I, I didn't appreciate the way he, he acted and all, and he's even acting now. But what's fair for one is fair for the other. And these, this, this is so obvious what's going on. So it's all part of, I think, a spiritual attempt. And it's succeeding to uh, undermine the foundations of the United States. And so Pride Month and this and that, you know, it's, you, the elephant got its nose under the tent. And the whole body is now underneath it, bringing in every other perversion that follows that kind of mm. sexual deviation. And it's attacking our children. It's, it's destroying our children. I mean, you've got children who think that they are uh, something else. And laws that are being passed, or at least being in, here in California, that says that I, as a parent, don't have the right to tell my child that their idea that they may not be a male or a female, that I don't have that right anymore, but Big Brother does. Mm. And uh, foster parents have to sign agreements that they're going to allow uh, a child who is seven years old who can't even figure out how to spell his last name is 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 able to tell you what gender he is just because he thinks because he plays with the doll this is crazy we're seeing it happen and we have to be more vocal about it john right. that's Amen. What it is. standing truth on god's well, word yeah of course i mean that's what we're supposed to do right well pastor thank you so much i uh, wanted to take because to me it's just backwards you know and <laughs> and uh but again it's the times we're living in and uh and to pray for our nation, pray for that people would be delivered and set free from a lifestyle of sin, and uh, pray that our church stands up, not just our church, the but the church, the body of Christ stands up. Yeah. So, Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Do want to remind you that we have our Wednesday evening services, and you know, sometimes, Pastor, by Wednesday evening, we've been so beat up from the week, it seems like Friday, and it's a great opportunity to come and be refreshed in God's Word. Mm -hmm. And I was encouraging the church on Sunday morning that if for some reason Wednesday hasn't been available for you to come, to come check it out and come be a part of our Bible study uh, because uh, it's been a rich study. And to be in refreshed in God's Word, be in worship and be in fellowship, it's a great, it's a great time just to get together mm -hmm. with, uh, with our church family. So I want to encourage you guys to come out 7 p.m. on Wednesday and then again on Sundays at 8.30 and 10.45. Tomorrow it's Romans. Uh, and then Sunday, we're still in... Uh, we're gonna be in Acts chapter two. Oh, cool. Cool, the church. So <laughs> it's probably time to stop talking, John. Amen. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.